So me and Meg grew up in different towns, so we were always competing against each other in netball, basketball, football, any sport. And then we played rep netball together for Burellen. So we came together as a team. I first met Meg um, in year six and I used to travel over to Leeton to play rep netball. Um, and then the year after I started at St Francis and we became best friends ever since. Maggie, she had an infectious smile. She was full of life. Um, I just remember her high, tight ponytail she used to just fly around the netball court. Um, she was competitive. Um, she was just full of life and, and she was loved by everybody. She was very determined, mischievous, um, funny, very quick-witted, talented. Um, her personality was larger than life, really. Um, she was like a best friend to me and she would like always put a smile on my face and like she would always have fun together and she would love to play sport and she was naturally good at any sport she played. Meg was, was more or less a, a second sister for me. We um, spent, spent Christmases and Easters together. Um, you'd always see her running the market at netball and at footy. Um, so one thing that I always remember about Meg is she was just always dancing, laughing, singing, especially when we had netball training. She's always really had life in her, like always having fun. Um, it was actually Abby's birthday on the 24th of September. Um, I had a car full of boarders and I'd received a phone call from the school counsellor asking if she could have a quick chat. And at that point, I said, oh, just give me five minutes. So I got home and I rang her back and she was said to me, do you aware that um, Meg has been seeing me? And I was like, no, I was not aware. And she was concerned of that day as she was talking self-harm. At our athletics carnival, she just, she came to school and she wasn't like feeling it and it wasn't like Meg, like she gave everything 110%. Um, so yeah, she didn't really want to go in any of the events, which I was a bit shocked. That was the first kind of like, oh, what's going on? A few months went on and she was having a few like panic attacks so that's when I started to get a more worried so I suggested like let's talk to mum or a counsellor um, and yeah I just went on from them. I had no idea that she was struggling at all I always thought she was just very happy and a bright person. So the 30th of October 2018 was a typical normal morning in the Thomas household it was me ranting and raving to kids to hurry up and get ready because we've got to get to school. Throughout the day, I got a phone call from um, one of Meg's friends to say that Meg had said that she wouldn't be here next week. And at that point, obviously, you know, it was a concern. Tried to ring Meg, no answer. Um, rang Josh and Abs who were allowed their phone at school saying Meg had been unwell and in the meantime Meg had rang back and um, I asked her what had happened and she said um, oh money mucking around Ginny. I was like okay then can I come and pick you up from school? No I'm good I'm doing a prayer tomorrow in the chapel and we're practicing. So left it at that, Wayne picked her up as per normal, um, they come home, Wayne um, had to take Ella to netball and then when Wayne and Ella came back they asked where Meg was and they said oh she was staying with you. So in the end they went looking for her and they found that yeah, she had committed suicide, yeah. I came home from work and um, Josh was at the front gate waving me down and um, yeah, there's just scenes I'll never forget. 
Um, I didn't believe it at all. I was really in shock when my parents told me and I didn't I just didn't think that she could do something like that or that she was struggling and in that pain. Um, I still haven't really accepted it, kind of. It's like she's moved away, that she's coming back, but she's not. Well, I was one of the first ones out there. Um, so I can just say that when, when it happened, it was just, you know, um, just in, everyone, was, it was just shock and disbelief and um, absolute, um, heartbreak and that um, that this this kind of could, can't be happening not to Meg. Leighton is a very very tight community so we know everyone but when t when Meg passed it was a huge huge shock for the uh, to the community. Meg's family is a really well known uh, family in the community and well loved and I think no one saw it coming um, so it was a huge impact and it makes you look into your inner circles to make sure and think about mental health and think is everyone okay in my inner circle. Look for the next Oh, to be honest, one day rolled into the next and they were all quite a blur, but um, we pulled mattresses into a room and we all slept in there together for, for some time. And um, I remember pulling up at the, the church the day of her funeral and I said to the kids, this is probably going to be the hardest day of your life. And we had a bit of a group cuddle and I said, Pretty much we were all determined at that point that we were going to get through it and we decided to um, swim and not sink. So from that day onward we teamed up together, we attended counselling and um, yeah, our lives pretty much changed forever from that point of time. The week leading up to when she passed away, she was a bit like... She didn't like doing the things she really loved and she was more like sleeping all the time and just not her normal self. Um, if I could go back, I would probably just talk to her more and just let her know that I was there for her and that there were so many people that loved her and that she wasn't alone and there were people that she could talk to that could help her. I still remember the last time I, I walked past her and I thought, like, why on earth did not, didn't I say something on that day? So that is still in my head, where I walked past and I, should, I literally remember her walking past me with a big smile. Yeah, I think it's important to speak about it at school, to share experiences with your friends and also everyone has goes through struggles at time and it's important to yeah, just support each other through that. Um, something we should do in schools to combat mental health and suicide should be reiterating to people that mental health isn't uncommon and it should almost be normalised as a part of someone's life. If I could speak to Meg, I would say that I miss her very much and it's not the same and my life would never be the same without her. I would give her a big cuddle and kiss and tell her that we love her and miss her every single moment. Um, and to tell her that she was never alone, you know. We were always would have supported her and the day Meg left us, um, our chain broke and we would do anything to relink that chain again. The phone rings. I hear you on the line. Everything is on my And I'm 
I'll tell you this I miss you now Tell me what you wanna know I'll tell you anything Tell me where you wanna go I'll take you anywhere But baby, please Don't forget about me